WCBI News at 10 starts now. At least 20 people are dead and at least 26 more are injured when a gunman opened fire at a shopping center in El Paso, Texas. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Riley Livingston. Police have a 21-year-old man in custody. CBS's Kenneth Craig is following the story from New York. A gunman opened fire at a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, just before 11 a.m. on Saturday. These surveillance photos appear to show the alleged shooter entering the building. The Walmart was uh, at, at, at capacity when the, the shootings uh, occurred. Sources tell CBS News 21-year-old Patrick Crucis is in custody. The person that was taken into custody was taken into custody without incident, and no law enforcement personnel fired their weapons. Police are investigating a manifesto apparently written by the suspect. He denounces the increasing Hispanic population in Texas as one reason for his actions. Congresswoman Veronica Escobar represents El Paso. This is someone who came from outside of our community to do us harm. A community that has shown nothing but generosity and kindness to the least among us. The Walmart is part of a large shopping complex that was on lockdown during the attack. Video from behind a closed gate shows police quickly moving through the Cielo Vista Mall. People just started bolting straight into the store uh, in order to get, get to cover. Employees and shoppers say it took some time before they realized what was going on. And I wasn't really paying attention, but I heard do, 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 and then it went do, 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 do. Just hours after the attack, hundreds waited in long lines to answer a urgent call for blood donations in the latest community ripped apart by yet another mass shooting. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. While El, pa El Paso copes with today's tragedy, people in our area continue to remember those killed in the shooting earlier this week at the South Haven Walmart. Among the two killed was Anthony Brown of Caledonia. Hugs filled with emotion and prayers filled with power is what filled the air at a vigil for slain Walmart employees Anthony Brown and Brandon Gales. It's just heartfelt to see that many people that would come out here on a Friday night just to show support. Select employees shared memories of the two. Travis Jones spoke up the last words Anthony Brown shared with him before the shooting. Anthony used to come through all the time, take care of business. I said, you know it. He's all right, John. Brad Sullivan is a manager for Walmart who knew both victims. It's going to be a hard deal to, to close. Sullivan says this tragedy is hard to accept as a reality. However, he's confident there is a positive to surface through such a tough situation. I can, I can tell you that this group of associates, uh, this community, um, all together, uh, there, there is no doubt that, that we're going to rebound and we're going to move on. An early morning fire destroys a mobile home in Winston County. Winston County Fire Coordinator Jody Garrett says the fire happened around 2 a.m. in the High Point community. A couple was home at the time of the blaze. No injuries were reported, and the cause is suspected to be electrical. The High Point Fire Department, along with the Louisville Fire Department, attended the scene. It's now time to turn things over to meteorologist Kendall Smith for a first look at our forecast. Kendall, there's been some rumbles of thunder today. Hey, Riley, well, rumbles of thunder are right. Some of our locations have seen some showers and thunderstorms this afternoon and early evening. This is taking a live look on Doppler radar at this time. Still seeing some showers and thunderstorms out there, but they are starting to dissipate. That will continue to be the trend as we go throughout your overnight hours. It's taking a live look in downtown Columbus on our off insurance sky camera, where we are currently dry. Temperatures are sitting in the mid 70s, and as we go throughout your overnight hours, temperatures will drop down into the low 70s with partly cloudy skies. Thanks, Kendall. The next three weeks will be busy for college towns across the state, and Starkville is no exception. Our Cash Matlock spoke with an area truck dealer to see how they're preparing for the increase in rentals. Kim Moreland owns three of the five U-Haul dealerships in Starkville. She says this time of year is the busiest for her business. It gets hectic. Today alone, we have sent out 15 local rentals. Um, 
and that's trucks and trailers. They will come back and we will rent them out again today. Folks will be coming from all over to attend college at Mississippi State University, and that means Moreland will be getting trucks and trailers from several different states. Florida, Texas, all over. Mm -hmm. So this will be the first wave of it. I think I've got 55 pieces of equipment expected in today and tomorrow to drop, and that's not counting the ones that haven't already picked up yet. Last year, I got in 127 trailers and 74 trucks. That's a lot of equipment for one area. Moreland says she often has to find other places for rentals to go. We'll send a bunch of it out to the other dealers I was telling you about that I like to give equipment to because they don't get the influx of equipment like I do. Um, and then next week we'll get another load. Moreland's business has made the top 100 list seven times this year, an achievement only 2% of the company's dealerships even qualify for. She says a lot of that has to do with customer service. My customers get a text message from me from my personal cell phone, tell them my name or address, and if they need anything, feel free to text or call. It helps out because you'd be surprised how many people that are coming to Startful the first time don't know anything about Startful. And at the end of the day, Moreland says there's one thing that gets her business through its peak season. Organization. You have to keep it organized to keep it running. And like I said, when you get 127 trailers in, it gets, it gets you have to keep it organized. Moreland says the second busiest time of year is May when students start moving out. Well, school is right around the corner, and there's still time for one last summer bash, a back-to-school bash, that is. Young Men Who Care organization hosted a back-to-school bash, giving out pens, pencils, backpacks, and more. The organization teamed up with Mitchell Eye Care to give students a free vision test. Member Mackenzie Rogers says Young Men Who Care was created to let kids learn and explore the path to success. Well, it's hot right now. What is a better way to cool down than a nice, refreshing watermelon? And where's a better place to find watermelons than Water Valley this weekend? WCBI's Chad Groening has the story. The banner over Main Street tells it all. This is a landmark year for the annual watermelon carnival in Water Valley. And this year, the crowds were huge. There were plenty of activities for the children, including bungee jumping, and a pool to cool down in. And young and old alike were entertained by magician Dorian Lachance. Tyler Hill is co-chair of the event. Water Valley used to uh, be a big hub uh, when we had the railroad of uh, shipping out watermelons and produce uh, from here. Uh, of course, the railroad's gone, so it's not as big as it used to be, but we still have a lot of uh, big time growers of watermelons around. And the farmers do a great job of knowing how to plant, knowing how to grow. and and harvest their melons and, and the guys that do the big melon they do a lot of different uh, sampling and different things to try to make them grow even bigger and, and better. And one of the highlights of this year's watermelon carnival was the appearance of the defending state 3A champion Water Valley Blue Devils. Coach Brad Ambry says it is a great community event. The community supports us year round you know with football and with the school and it's our chance to give back to be a part of the watermelon carnival and you know I think it was a great thing that the uh, the community got the Queens from years past together and the football team was able to escort them through the town. Just a good time. You know, football starts Monday and everyone is excited and, uh, and this kind of just coincides with the start of football every year. So it's a big deal. Big deal in Water Valley. And this year's Watermelon Queen is Ole Miss sophomore Carly Washington who grew up celebrating every year in her hometown. Friday night is so fun with the street dance and the fireworks. And then Saturday with everybody out just enjoying my town. I love it. Um, and my parents actually give out free watermelon at 1 o'clock. And that is my favorite event because, I don't know, I just get to see everybody. And, like, it's my thing, you know. Like, I just, every year I get to be out there. And Washington says Water Valley is truly about family. The family atmosphere, definitely. You walk downtown and people ask you how you've been and how your mama and them are. And it's just everybody's so close-knit, you never meet a stranger in Water Valley. And the town is very welcoming to newcomers. Robert Jones got out of the Marines and purchased a farm here a year and a half ago. We didn't really know anything about farming. And uh, we we just kind of learned as we, learning as we go, I'll say that. And, uh, you know, we're just... Uh, uh, taking it one step at a time and we're first generation farmers so we, we're really it's definitely a big learning curve but we're uh, we're rocking and rolling and the rest of the water valley watermelon community is going to have to keep up with the joneses chad groaning wcbi news water valley Finishing off the day, Water Valley broke the Guinness World Record for the largest watermelon eating contest with over 750 competitors competing at the same time. Dozens of people made their way back home to Artesia today. We'll tell you why after the break.
WCBI First Alert Forecast. Welcome back. Hundreds of people are gathering in Artesia this weekend to partake in some fun and fellowship. This weekend, the town is celebrating its annual Artesia Day Festival. Our Tyler Hole visits the festival and has more on what this day means to the community. Soul filled music to get everyone grooving, hot food off the grill, and everyone having a good time. That's what Artesia Day is all about. The festival has grown over the past two decades and continues to get bigger. It means so much to me to be able to bring joy to the people of Artesia. The purpose of the festival is to bring the community together as one. Rhonda Henry has been a vendor at Artesia Day for the past 10 years and says seeing the joy on everyone's faces is what keeps her coming out each year. I enjoy the people. Um, everybody's so friendly and the kids love them. Grandparents love them, moms and dads, you know, and I enjoy serving people. Uh, when I see a smile on that face and our cell phone goes out, it's amazing. It makes me feel wonderful. The event has grown so much over the years that even people from neighboring cities and communities pour into the small town to get in on all of the fun. Uh, it means a lot. They have people from that was originally from Artesia that come from out of town. They bring buses in and everything. Everybody come home and have a great time. Vincent Forsyth helps organize the Fun and Field event. He says last year roughly 20,000 people came out to the festival and he's expecting that number to grow even bigger this year. The festival will end Sunday with a baseball game with the Artesia A's versus Starkville and Sesums. Tyler Hall, WCBI News. Folks will be celebrating up until midnight with the festival officially wrapping up tomorrow. We'll full look at your forecast coming up next after the break. Your first alert AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Kendall Smith. Well, some locations saw quite a bit of rainfall this afternoon and evening, but the good news is those storms are starting to dissipate. This is our current setup on Doppler radar. We can see the showers and thunderstorms starting to fizzle out, and that's going to continue to be the trend as we go throughout your overnight hours as well. Now, we were sent in a bunch of double rainbow pictures. It was hard to make the cut to determine which ones we actually showed on air, but this picture was sent in to us from Tiffany Poole McCary of a double rainbow here in Columbus, as well as this next picture was sent in to us by Chad Seagraves of a double rainbow in Steens, Mississippi. You can just barely see that double rainbow up there but so many great pictures thank you so much for sending them in to us if you ever get any neat pictures like this make sure to send them in to us at WCBI weather on all social media platforms we really enjoy seeing them so this is our current live look in downtown Columbus we're currently dry temperature sitting at 73 degrees with a dew point at 71 so it is a little hot and muggy if you do happen to be out and about at this time and that's what we're seeing area wide temperatures are sitting in the mid 70s 73 in here in Columbus 72 in Amory 75 in Tupelo 75 in Corinth and 75 in Louisville. And we're not going to be dropping a whole lot for your overnight lows. Temperatures will dip down into the low 70s. Most of clear skies. We can't roll out the chance, however, to see one or two stray showers or thunderstorms, mainly after 1 a.m. But for the most part, most of us should be dry and winds will be calm out of the east. So, we're going to see partly cloudy skies for your overnight hours by the time we head into your morning hours, looking at mostly er, cloudy skies as well, and then we head into your lunchtime. That's our greatest chance to see some isolated showers and thunderstorms. We're going to keep those rain chances around throughout your afternoon and evening, and then we're going to clear those rain chances back off as we head into your overnight hours. So, if you're hoping to head to the car wash, you might want to hold off for your Sunday and Monday, but then you should be good to go for your Tuesday and Wednesday because we have just a little bit more rain to talk about. So, Monday morning looks to be dry, but we could see some isolated showers and thunderstorms starting to move in into their area by the afternoon and evening. They'll dry things back out for your overnight hours. Tuesday morning looks to be dry. Tuesday afternoon could see one or two isolated showers or thunderstorms, but for the most part, we look to be dry as we head into your overnight for your Tuesday. So area-wide tomorrow, temperatures will top out in the upper 80s and low 90s. It's going to be another summer scorcher with heat index values in the upper 90s. So just make sure to stay hydrated if you're headed out and about for the next several days. So, so it looks to be a soggy day for your Sunday and Monday. Then we'll drop those rain chances back off as we head into the beginning of your next work week. The temperatures in the low 90s and lows will be in the low 70s. Your WCBI Sports with Courtney Robb. Up on the high school football tour checks in with Victory Christian. The Eagles return a much younger squad this season, but that doesn't mean they aren't anticipating some big things. The Eagles are stop number 41 on our 60 and 60 marathon. WCBI 60 Schools in 60 Days is brought to you by Sparklight.
It all starts at the core for the Victory Christian Eagles. I feel like we got a good group. I feel like we got experience on the line coming back from last year, and we're going to find some some uh, skill players. Um, we're trying to break in a new quarterback, that type of thing. But but I feel like this is going to be a, a good group. I think all the guys out here are going to be able to contribute in some way. Confidence is on tap for this solid group of Eagles as well. Although Coach Ham sees the need for more skill players, his current guys are specifically boasting their speed as a point of hesitation for opposing teams. We have a very quick team. Uh, we have a lot of strength on the front line, and uh, we're very aggressive. So I don't think anybody could just go toe to toe with us this year. You know, we'll be adequate in that area with with speed. Dallas is a good running back. Uh, he 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 doesn't. Uh, you know, he doesn't look overly fast when he's running, but he, but he just he runs so smooth. And so uh, I think uh, he's going to be fine. Tashawn Rogers is another skill player for us that's got some good speed, good size, good size guy that uh, that we ought to we ought to be able to take advantage of some of that. A state championship has been on the mind for the Eagles after falling just short back in 2014. As always, the road to that starts with the team's chemistry as well as willingness to work and improve. When we were in ninth grade and stuff. We're beating teams by like 30 and stuff, and we're just ready to come out there and take it all this year. We lost a lot of star players, and uh, we're really young. So once we play our first game and set the tone, I think they'll know about us. Just like with his new season squad, Coach Ham believes a road to a state title begins at the core as well. We're just playing up to our potential, our capability, taking care of our home field, and uh, then letting letting the rest of it fall where it where it will. Because you know we're going we're going to need to be fortunate uh, in the injury standpoint or from an injury standpoint this year because of the lack of depth. And so uh, just just playing up to our capability, playing up to our potential. The season starts for Victory Christian with its first matchup at Unity Christian on August 23rd. With the Eagles on the high school football tour, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. Well, we continue to count down the days until the season begins, and we have 19 more to go, if you can believe it. Sunday, the high school football tour continues that countdown over in East Webster. Then Monday, we kick off the week by stopping in with Eupora. Tuesday, we'll be checking in on North Pontotoc before we head over to Pontotoc on Wednesday. And, of course, if you've missed any stops along the way, you can go and check those out on our website at WCBI.com. Friday. We have 27 days left on the countdown until the first kickoff of the college football season. The Bulldogs got back to work on the practice field Friday. And the questions continue to roll in for Mississippi State on what to expect from the QB slot this season. Although it's still unknown as to whether Keaton Thompson or Tommy Stevens will start, Stevens is still adjusting to life as a Bulldog. But according to head coach Joe Moorhead, it hasn't been too hard for Stevens to make the change. What we had run there and what we continue to run now, he had about, it's 100%. You know, there's some things that we did in our off-season studies and some things that we added that no, no one really knew, so it would have been not just new to him but new to everybody. But, you know, we changed some words of the play, so he, the, the concepts he would understand and understand. There's some, you know, like I said, some verbiage we changed, but, yeah, it was, it was, it was not trying to. It was not like trying to teach it to a new freshman. It was, it was like, you know, a guy that's been in the system for four years or three years. Ole Miss also getting back into the swing of things with fall camp on Friday. The Rebels have experienced plenty of change throughout the off season. No offensive and defensive coordinators being added to the Oxford team. Also, Ole Miss has to replace some key components on offense after losing guys like D.K. Metcalf, A.J. Brown, and Dawson Knox. Right now, the Rebels sing, the sky's the limit. You know, we're given this platform. We're given all the tools we need to succeed and, you know, further our career here at Ole Miss. And, um, you know, they, the coaches are putting us in great position. They're, they're doing all the right things. And, you know, so as, as we are, we're putting in the extra work, putting in the, the overtimes in the film room, you know, just, you know, just building that chemistry, you know, off the field and on the field especially. You know, getting timing of the routes, and I feel like if we're on the same page, I feel like we can be unstoppable. The ceiling is as high as we want it to go, you know. Uh, whatever we put a ceiling cap on ourselves is, you know, the ceiling for us. So uh, we can't allow ourselves to do that. So we just got to continue to get better each and every day, each and every day. If you get 1% better every day at the end of the year, you're 100% better. 
That's it for sports. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with your last look. Well, some locations could have a soggy Sunday in store for us, as well as by the time we head into the beginning of next week, Monday looks to be a little wet as well. But the good news is we'll even things back out for a typical summertime weather pattern with highs in the low 90s each day and lows will be in the low 70s. You know, while it's been hot, it hasn't been miserable. I will say that. It's been just kind of bearable. Yeah, this evening was pretty nice. I hope, you know, if you got out and about. I will, I will say after every time it rains, it actually feels very nice afterwards. I know there's a couple times I was doing a story the other day and it just felt great after it rained. Exactly. It's much appreciated. So. Yeah. Well, we hope everyone has a great night and we'll see you back here tomorrow.